<coughs> Late last Friday, Governor Martinez press staff released a slew of bill signings and vetoes. Now, among the vetoes, measures that would have given the Public Education Commission more control over charter schools as well as bills that would prohibit some public spending on for-profit education. Let's start there, Ms. Whitney. The sense was these bills also in there were a reform of A through F grading system. The teacher and principal evaluations, they were just DOA. In fact, someone could argue the only major education reform the governor would have signed was a social promotion bill, but what happened there as well? Let's just start with that, with, with those vetoes on, on those bills. Uh, was she okay for you on those? Uh, we, is that set up yes. something better down the road? Yes. No. Okay. I, you know, it, the 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 Democrats in the legislature, their their game plan in the past on education was reform was just to kill it all in committee mm -hmm. and not send anything up. What they opted for this time was to basically send up bills that had no real teeth in them. So it was essentially the same things, uh, basically redefining them and sending up for you know for her for her signature. So sure. uh, it, her opinion, my understanding was that they just didn't do what needed to be done, so she didn't sign them. Okay. You know, that's okay. Rob was that your sense of it as well because if you think about what what did die in committee quietly some of the social promotion stuff the stuff that yeah she wanted that she wanted, that wanted anyways, exactly yeah. but then a through f i was a little surprised that didn't a lot of the democrat help she had had on this seemed to go away this this last go round yeah right now it's it's pitched battle right now right <laughs> I mean, the, the, the democrats are, are are trying to knock down everything that she's uh, tried to mm -hmm. put forth and the governor, this was no surprise at all that the governor was going to, was going to veto these things. Yeah. And also on the, uh, uh, on the school choice, uh, charter school uh, uh, thing with the PEC, mm -hmm. same sort of deal there as well. I mean, the, the governor believes that, uh, that there should be more opportunities or more school choice. And the, the Democrats, uh, many of them who are, who are beholden to the teachers union are dead set against it. Mm -hmm. Exactly right. Margaret, you know, it's interesting when you think about education, previous Governor Richardson, now this governor, mm -hmm. it's always, you, you have to do this if you're governor of Mexico. You have to right. promise better, right? This is just what you do. It, but it seems to me her scorecard's not looking great now. If education was one of the first things she came in with to really do something about, it's just not feeling like she's getting much traction at this point. Well, and I would posit that this, these education issues are among the ugliest and most contentious of this right. last legislative session. Mm -hmm. And as you said, I think that the timber of the debate has reached this kind of everyone's digging in on their position. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I think there are some really valid questions um, about for-profit charter school sure. management that were raised this session. Mm -hmm. I think because the confirmation of the secretary designate was um, held up in committee and there wasn't a lot of questioning about some of those questions that were raised. There wasn't a lot of follow, follow through with her. Mm -hmm. um, there, there remain a lot of um, answers that still have to be addressed yeah, about e those issues. Exactly. Your thoughts on that one, uh, Sophie, especially the, uh, if you want to touch the Scandera thing, that's interesting, but the A through F I'm, I'm just kind of hung up on. I thought that well, was interesting. There remain, yeah. I think, uh, tremendous uh, philosophical, ideological even uh, differences. Everybody mm -hmm. agrees that education needs to be better. Mm -hmm. uh, I think that there is a lot of uncertainty, unfortunately, in, uh, amongst even parents as to how to make that work. Mm -hmm. As we all know, there's not a whole lot of money to, to throw at this problem. And, and education, not just here but across the country, has become a real right. political mm -hmm. football. Right. And so mm -hmm. to expect to see that move in a positive direction from either side, I think would be extraordinarily naive in mm -hmm. this in this current political climate. And so I, I just, I'm surprised that anything really made it to the governor's desk at all. Right, that had anything um, behind it. Right? Absolutely, yeah, absolutely. Exactly. To Whitney's point earlier. Now, Rob, let me ask you this. The governor also signed a potential fix for the state's pension plan for educators. Mm -hmm. As you know, you re Lord, you've uh, covered this extensively. Now, as we record this, nothing yet on the on the fix for the state workers. Mm -hmm. Do you have any personal guesses of what, what the holdup is on that? Because again, as we watch this Friday night, this would have been finished right. um, earlier today. But right. you know. I, the holdup on the PERA uh, approving that bill from the governor's perspective is that the um, the taxpayers, the employer portion, is ve is very heavily weighted okay. as opposed to the employee contributions, mm -hmm. and so there's some concern there, uh, and that's it's rather inside baseball. There's lots of inside baseball at the legislature, but one of the inside baseball um, bones of contention is that the ERB people, and the uh, always feel like they're getting. A raw or a raw or deal mm -hmm. than the people in para. I see. And so that's what's, what's the, the nature of the rawness. What what do they feel? The because the ERB employees 
kick more into their uh, pensions than the peer than the para people. Those gotcha. are the education and right. ERB right. or the mm -hmm. education education mm -hmm. retirement board. Gotcha. Yeah. gotcha. So that's that's part of it. That's right. part of it. My guess, and I, I said this last week, and I'll stick my neck out a little bit. I think she's going to sign it. It might be a close call, but mm -hmm. I think she's going to sign it because I don't know if she can get a better deal. Mm -hmm. Ah, interesting. Would you agree with that, Margaret? That's an interesting take. I, yeah. Yeah. I think so. Well, and going back to the ERB thing, there, mm -hmm. there was an interesting point that. Um, because you mentioned the rawness, and I think it was Mimi Stewart uh, said that educators were being singled out and that the ERB right. was being held to a different standard than mm -hmm. other state employees. But I thought it was interesting that even um, the Republican, the minority whip, Nate Gentry, actually had some, he, he was opposed to SB 115 because he uh. said that it would, it, it could potentially affect retention and recruitment of teachers in mm -hmm. the state. So. Mm. See, again, that's that There's football nature, right? Yeah. <laughs> this whole thing. One of, one of the challenges thing. here, um, to, to your point about, about the governor perhaps not liking the balance between what the taxpayers kick in and what the employer kicks in, mm -hmm. sorry, what the employee kicks in, um, is that, is that mm -hmm. still the employee will be kicking more in, more under this plan than mm -hmm. the employee kicked in before. Oh, weren't the the governor's okay just with not that getting early, as early on. much as she wanted. Oh, fair enough. As fair much enough. as she wanted. And so, mm -hmm. and so that balance is really, I think has been really contentious and really difficult. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that she, she probably, I think you're right, she probably will end yeah. up signing because there is so much pushback on that. Mm -hmm. It will be difficult to mm -hmm. get something back. You know what, James? I'm, I'm going to hold you there, Whitney, because I, I want to cover a lot of ground here. I want to hold you on that subject and ask you a new one, actually, and that is minimum wage. Interesting. Minimum we covered wage. that here a couple of weeks ago, right. and interestingly, I, I still have to ask this question. It, you know, it, was there a chance for the governor to come out of this in a different way, or Democrats in a different way, by having a minimum wage bill of some sort? push all the way through. Is there any downside for the governor here? Not on, on, on vetoing the minimum wage hike? Yeah. No, I don't think okay. so. I, okay. You know, it goes along with a lot of her pro-business um, stances in this legislative session. Mm -hmm. And, you know, talking about the education bills and, and you know, the pair and the, uh, the, the pension plan shoring up, there actually was a lot, um, in watching the legislature for the last 15 years like I've been doing, there was quite a bit of compromise legislation that came out of this session this year. Big, mm -hmm. important, systemic stuff that got done, mm -hmm. whether it was the unemployment uh, insurance fund, whether it was um, the reduction in corporate taxes on businesses, whether it was shoring up the pension fund, the New Mexico Health Insurance um, Exchange was passed. So, I mean, even though there were things like we can talk about it being raw and there was contention on certain issues up at the legislature, when you look at the big picture of what came out of there, there was a lot of pro-business legislation that's come out from under her pen. And I, I'm, you know, I'm glad she vetoed It was interesting to listen to the chamber almost act like it was Christmas morning. Yeah, that it was, was really stuff. interesting. Was, we didn't yeah. even expect this one size this present. <laughs> yeah. All right, you know what we're doing now? On the clock. Time to put these guys on the clock. First up for a hot minute of debate is the Albuquerque City Council going in circles. Ha uh -huh. On the prospect <laughs> of a roundabout on Rio Grande and Candelaria. You know about this one for sure. We covered it here. The council will now spend more money to update the traffic study they already have. Whitney, I'm going to stay with you on this. Uh, seven years <laughs> of effort. A lot of money yeah. spent on studies. I'm not yeah. sure why we need another study, but it is what it is. What's your thought? Please, nobody ever again propose a roundabout in the city of Albuquerque. <laughs> Please. I mean, this is ridiculous. It's just one intersection of about, you know, 2,000. There's so many problematic intersections. If we have to go through this every single time, I can't imagine. I'm <laughs> Sophie. Uh, you know what? I'm going to say, and I'll probably get hate mail on my, face, on my Facebook page, but I am generally speaking pro roundabout. Uh, I do not live in that area, but my experience of roundabouts is generally positive, yeah. and I find them an excellent traffic calmer, but Which also, is what they're supposed to do. On. That's right. Yes. Rob, your thoughts? Uh, yeah, I know you're Santa Fe, but... I live in Santa Fe, so I don't care. <laughs> there you go. Good enough. Margaret, you don't live in Santa Fe. Do you I care? Don't. Well, I have to say that it makes, it, it makes me marvel at what people do get activated yes. about. Yes. Yes. And I just wonder, how can we create... Uh, a version of roundabouts on other issues <laughs> <Yeah>. like <laughs> government <laughs> corruption yeah. or police. So 400 people turn out for a town hall meeting <laughs> yeah, and yell exactly. at each other, right? How can we how can we build a roundabout around That's city genius. corruption issues? Yeah. I like that. Yeah. Right on right the nose. Good job there, city councilor. <laughs> Michael Cook, not funny at all, has resigned his Albuquerque post after an arrest for suspicion of drunken driving. Margaret, let me say with you, the right move, or could uh, Mr. Cook have taken responsibility for his arrest and still kept his job? What do you think's think going on I think it would there? have been tricky because mm -hmm. if I remember correctly, he was wavering a little bit on whether or not to run for re-election, and he had just announced that he, he was announced. going to, Correct. like, within days. Right. 
That's so right. it's a pretty tenuous time. And Rob, sometimes <laughs> in these situations, people get in your ear to tell you either way. You know what I mean? Right. It's yeah, amazing. You can tell which way the wind's blowing. If it's you're, right. it, you know, if you're influential, if you, if, if you've got some credibility, but by all indications, Mr. Cook was kind of a backbencher. Okay. Okay. You thought Whitney? If he had tried to run, he would have lost anyways. I mean, DUI in the state is very, very serious. I think he made the right decision for Did a lot of reasons. There? Absolutely yeah. the right decision. Interesting. Promising not to, quote, chicken out, and quote, nine defendants being sued by the El Dorado Community Improvement Association, Rob's laughing, for keeping poultry in their yards have countersued the ECIA. The issue is whether hens, not roosters, can be declared recognized household pets and used for harvesting eggs. Now, Mr. Rob Nicoleski, <laughs> our resident El Dorado. Dorado. Yes, you I do. Um, why is this in court? What happened here? This is in court because the pro-chicken people tried to sneak this thing through. <laughs> they weren't able to sneak it through the board, so they had a vote, they lost the vote, Okay. and so now this thing's in court. The, the problem I've got with the libertarian in me says, Please. people want to have chickens in their backyard, that's fine. However, the... The, the, the homeowner the, in you. Yeah, well, <laughs> the covenants clearly have clearly right. stated. They say no poultry. Now the people that want the chickens say, well, the chicken's my pet. Right. Well, if that's the case, then I can put a coyote in my backyard and call it a pet, or a bram a bull in the there backyard and call it a pet. And so I, wow. I, I think that if you're a lawyer, lawyer, you would have trouble fighting this in court. Do the pro-chicken people have a uniform? I like the way you say pro-chicken. <laughs> well, the, the anti-chicken people, yeah. Right, a little, yeah. little it's, thing it's up top. Red and blue, just like in the United there States. There you go. I'll let our, our oh, resident awesome. handle that whole thing on his own. Is that okay with no. you guys? It's a very <laughs> interesting... <laughs> well, 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 I can get the hate mail on my That's well right. Put, yes. That was right. On the ding, it was once the world's fastest computer, <laughs> but now the Roadrunner has been decommissioned. Five years ago, the $121 million computer broke records so if we had some momentum there with economic development project, I mean, people were really firmly behind this. Science is, doesn't mean it's a guarantee of success. So in New Mexico, it's different to talk about success and failure. Was this a success or was it a failure? Well, I, you know, I don't consider uh, the Roadrunner to have been a failure. Okay. The, tr the truth of the matter is that, that computers, technology moves so quickly. Mm -hmm. You know, the, the miracle that we create today is going to be redundant. Mm -hmm. What is this, five years down the road, six years That's down right. the road? I mean, it's, it's, right. it's expected. Right. And so I'm not, I'm not particular, I'm not weeping, it's okay. It would be nice there to, I, I, if they'd move it into my office, I'd something to do with it. Maybe we can give it to Governor Richardson. Run he was farm all for it. You can, you can have it. What do you think about this one, Whitney? Uh, it just so. made me sad reading about it. It was like the old, large, you know, computer. Yes. Right. Gonna right. get, you know, you had a vision of a Fl you know, Fred Flintstone. So. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like a whacked out kid's book. I know, you know but it's Main sad. Mainframe I mean, reels are going around. I remember so know? well when they first, it was, you know, hyped up so much when they first got it up it and running. Hyped. And it's yeah. like, oh, now it's old. Yeah, it was. Margaret, it's an interesting point Whitney just made. It was a big deal around mm -hmm. some. Mm -hmm. yeah. circles around mm -hmm. here, you know. Well, and for me, it raises other questions about how do we design a tech industry for the future yeah. that doesn't have obsolescence built into mm -hmm. it. That's when you a look tough at one. Intel, yeah. like, Absolutely. Yeah. Intel right. is a huge contributor to our economic landscape and, and that no technology, right. 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 and that technology, That's it's right. going to be hard for them to keep it up. Well so. done. Next one, UNM President Robert Frank wants the university to partner with a yet to be named business to bid on the management contract for Sandia Labs. Goodness gracious, Whitney. Mm -hmm. The research implications are really enormous to me because if we've seen with Los Alamos, um, also a contract could be uh, like tough to manage. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of issues. Mm -hmm. If the mission changes, suddenly you've got this whole thing going on. Mm -hmm. Is this something UNM wants to get into or is this a smart move? Yeah, by I, I, think th I think they should. I definitely okay. think they I mean, they're, they're uniquely positioned with their proximity to the labs. I think it's a very good opportunity. I, you know, obviously many details to work out, sure, but sure. a good idea. Mm -hmm. Sophie, your thoughts? I certainly think that it could be very good for UNM from an, an educational, a research, a yep. scientific perspective. I agree completely. The question as to whether UNM is up for the management side, mm -hmm. it will be interesting to see who they uh, look to partner with. Mm -hmm. Rom, let me ask you a question. It's aggressive if you think about it. Yeah. And this president... $2.4 billion. Thank yeah. you. <laughs> what do you what do you thought there? Are we up to the task? What do you think? Well, the fiscal conservative in me is a little bit skeptical, but um, the University of Tennessee has something with the, uh, Oak, with Ridge. the Oak Ridge That's National right. Laboratory, and it's That's worked right. out very well for them. So. Mm -hmm. um, I believe, well, I'd be willing to listen to it. There you go. I'm going to hold you there, Margaret. We're out of time on that one. But I agree with Sophie. I think the, the, the research, research stuff that could come out of it is huge. Be fantastic. Unbelievable. For you and other things, too. I don't have enough time. Now, Jeff Bingaman is no longer a senator, which often seems to mean it's time to cash in. 
on that public service with a million dollar lobbying gig. That's how it works. But not for Mr. Bingaman, who's on his way to Stanford in a year-long fellowship in energy policy. Rob, um, it, it sounds so Ill altruistic. He can do anything. Just chill out in a classroom for a while. Just, what, what's your thought on this? I'm going to be the skunk at the garden party <laughs> here because <laughs> everyone likes Senator Bingaman and he's a, a, almost a saintly figure. Mm -hmm. But I will be the skunk and point out that he and his wife are incredibly wealthy. Ann Bigaman made two and a half million dollars for six months of work with Global Crossing, which was kind of like the telecommunications Enron. Wow, so it's not yeah, like it they live on the west side of Albuquerque counting their Social Security check or counting their pennies to make sure it ends meet. So sure. it's nice that he's going to Stanford. It's nice that he's doing something like this instead of going to K Street. But on the other hand, I think there are other people that are. Margaret, a fellowship at UNM would have been nice. Yeah, that would have I was actually yeah. thinking the same thing. And yeah. I'm not sure that there are any retired senators who are penny pinching. We're really hurting that. that much. Yeah, hurting <laughs> that badly. Um, and I think, you know, it's a return to Stanford. I'm pretty sure he graduated from Stanford, so mm -hmm. he feels like a Right, that's not an anti-Stanford thing I just said, pretty, you know, just a pro. <laughs> yeah. That's for sure. I, you know Stanford, what I, I want to mention yeah. as well, that um, that Ms., uh, Senator and Mrs. Bingaman are going to be honored this weekend by the Mexican American Law Student Association. Cool. And they're fighting for justice awards. So okay. congratulations to them and also on the gig at Stanford. I think that's very cool. Interesting. Your thought, Ms. I, I liked his choice. Uh, you know, it's a, it's a temporary deal. It's one year. Uh, it does kind of clean up the image of they're just going to end up lobbying and make a bunch of money on K Street, and this, I thought it was very Bingham-ish of him. So. Right. Mm -hmm. That's still available down the road, exactly. K Street. Exactly. <laughs> if I he mean, changes his mind, this he's upset. It's just a one-year deal. So. No one's going to say, who are you? you know, yeah. Thank you, guys. Great topics tonight. Thanks. Really terrific. Thank you all for your efforts. Next week, we'll know about the budget, capital outlay, and the governor's final vetoes. Expect a full rundown. So until then, I'm Gene Grant. We'll see you next week in Focus.